Welcome, welcome. Now, you may be wondering what the hell's going on. Well, for today's video, I'm doing a tie-in episode for the live-action Little Mermaid that's coming out soon. And second of all, if you're wondering why am I a seahorse, I wanted to do something special for this review, and I wanted to turn into a creature from the sea, whether it was a shark or a fucking Gyarados. However, I fucked up the transformation jutsu, and I ended up like this. So for now, let's just check out the original Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid is a 1989 animated musical fantasy film produced by Walt Disney Feature Animation and released by Walt Disney Pictures. And it is loosely based on the 1837 Danish fairy tale of the same name by Hans Christian Andersen. And the film is also the 28th Disney animated feature film. And it's the one that kicked off the Disney renaissance during the late 80s and throughout the 90s. And Disney were betting a lot on this one. After the death of Walt Disney, they were going through a lot of shit. Their movies were bombing hard, so they were betting everything on this one. So without further ado, let's get into it. The film begins with a fishing boat, and we see a fish escaping. Well, great, there goes my dinner. Then we see the Kingdom of Atlantica as they prepare an underwater concert and the ruler, King Triton, voiced by the late great Kenneth Mars, shows up along with his trusted advisor and composer, Sebastian, played by the late great Samuel E. Wright. And fun fact, Mickey Mouse, Goofy, and Donald Duck can be briefly seen in the crowd of Mer people when he passes over them. Anyways, we get a show where all of Triton's daughters perform except for one. Ariel. And we meet the mermaid princess herself, Ariel, played by Jody Benson, and her friend Flounder, played by Jason Marin, as they explore a sunken ship looking for some collectibles. So she's excited about a fucking fork? Well then again, there's people who get excited over chopsticks. Anyways, time for a shark attack. Shark, shark, shark attack. This shark is like a maniac. Luckily for them, they escape and make their way to the surface where they meet their friend, Scuttle, voiced by the late great Buddy Hackett. And Ariel asks Scuttle what the items she collected are and gives them the wrong names. It's a dingle hopper. Humans use these little babies to straighten their hair out. Just a little twirl here and a yank there, and boy, oh, like. Yeah, I got an aesthetically pleasing configuration of hair. Are you serious? Then Ariel remembers that she missed a concert and heads back home. And she's being watched by two moray eels who belong to the sea witch herself, Ursula, played by the late great Pat Carroll. And now look at me, wasted away to practically nothing. Banished and exiled and practically starving. And fun fact, in the original version of the film, she was Triton's sister. But it ain't nonsense, it's the truth. King Triton's their ruler. And a witch of a sister named Ursula. Ursula? Evil and ugly and hungry for power. King Triton, he banished her off into exile. Anyways, she sees Ariel and plots an evil scheme to get her revenge on Triton. And back at the Royal Palace, both Triton and Sebastian are scolding Ariel for missing the concert. Flounder moves in to defend her, but accidentally snitches her out. Way to go, a-hole! Oh, Ariel, how many times must we go through this? You could have been seen by one of those barbarians, by, by one of those humans! Daddy, they're not barbarians! They are dangerous! I mean... He's not wrong. Anyways, Triton tells Ariel that she is forbidden to go to the surface, and that she'll do what he says, and she swims away crying. Well, too bad you're not 18, and you can be for the reef. Ooh, you suck! Anyways, Triton asks Sebastian if he was too hard on Ariel, to which Sebastian disagrees. And Sebastian suggests that Ariel needs constant supervision, which gives Triton the idea to send Sebastian to keep an eye on her. 
Of course, Sebastian complies, and he sees that Ariel and Flounder are swimming off somewhere, and he follows her. He is led to a hidden grotto, where he discovers a variety of human objects gathered together. And Ariel, still hurt by her father's words, sings of her collection of human objects, and how she desires to visit the human world. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Looking around here, you think... Sure. She's got everything. And fun fact, this song was almost cut out of the film because Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was the chairman of Disney at the time, thought it was too boring and it slowed the film down after a failed test screening. Luckily, he was convinced not to and the rest is history. I think it was probably out of the movie for about a minute or two and, uh, uh, you know, back in and can't imagine the movie without it, can you? Wish I could be part of that world. Unfortunately, I can't play too much of it or else I'll get a strike, but luckily, I found a parody. Up where they walk, up where it shines, up where I'm sure their team wins all the time. Up there it's stable, eating a bagel, up in New York. Oh, one of those flying rats just sh in my mouth. Anyways, Sebastian crashes in and threatens to reveal Ariel's hideout to the king, and she attempts to reason with Sebastian, but they get interrupted by the boat from earlier floating overhead blocking the moonlight. Now curious, Ariel swims to the surface and sees fireworks being shot into the night sky. She swims towards the vessel and climbs aboard to see dancing seamen, and she gets to meet the dog, Max. But she is left endured when she sees Prince Eric himself, voiced by Christopher Daniel Barnes. Suddenly, life has a new meaning to me. There's beauty up above and things we never take notice of. You wake up. And suddenly, you're in love. Anyways, he gets a statue of himself as a birthday present from his dude Grimsby, voiced by Ben Wright, who sourly proclaims that he hoped it would be a wedding present, but Eric disagrees. Oh, Eric, it isn't me alone. The entire kingdom wants to see you happily settle down with the right girl. Oh, believe me, Grim, when I find her, I'll know. Without a doubt, it'll just, bam, hit me. Like lightning. Ooh, be careful what you wish for, pal. And then shit hits the fan as the hurricane blows in and fucks up the ship. The crew abandons ship. Then Eric discovers that Max is still on the burning vessel and goes off to rescue him. Because that's what heroes do, goddammit. Unfortunately, while Eric manages to get Max to safety, he cannot save himself when he gets blown away by a massive explosion and thrown overboard and nearly drowns. Luckily for him, Ariel rescues him and takes him back to shore. Once at shore, Ariel sings of her desire to join Eric's world. If we could stay all day in the sun, just you and me, and I could be part of your world. As Grimsley raises him up, Eric vividly remembers a girl who had saved him and is determined to find her. And as Ariel watches him from a nearby rock, Sebastian tells her that the situation will be kept a secret from her father. But Ariel's not paying attention as she boldly claims that she will be part of Eric's world. Part of your world. However, what Ariel does not realize is that she is being watched by Ursula's eels, and Ursula continues plotting her evil scheme. A few days later, Ariel spends her time daydreaming of Eric, and she gets her father curious. Meanwhile, Sebastian is a nervous wreck trying to keep the secret being found out, and Ariel then decides she wants to visit Eric, but Sebastian is having none of that shit, and he attempts to bring her down to Earth, or the ocean floor in this case, with a musical number. Under the sea, under the sea, 
And here's another fun fact. Sebastian was originally going to be British, but the late great Howard Ashman suggested to make him Caribbean instead. And thanks to him, we have this song, which is based on Calypso music. And again, I can't play the whole thing, but luckily, I found a parody. There'll be no accusations, just friendly crustaceans under the sea. That's your solution to everything, to move under the sea. It's not gonna happen. Not with that attitude. Anyways, Flounder shows up and manages to slip Ariel away unnoticed. By the time the song ends, Ariel's gone and Sebastian is left alone. Suddenly, the Royal Herald calls for Sebastian to report to King Triton. Sebastian is scared shitless and accidentally slips the truth. I told her to stay away from humans. They are bad. They are trouble. They are... What about humans? Well... We're fucked. Back at Ariel's grotto, Flounder shows Ariel a surprise. Flounder. Flounder, you're the best. It looks just like him. It even has his eyes. Well, I'm glad she likes it because it was either that or a body pillow. However, shit hits the fan when Triton arrives at the grotto with Sebastian. And both Triton and Ariel get into one hell of an argument. You don't even know him. Know him? I don't have to know him! They're all the same! Spineless, savage, harpooning fish eaters! Incapable of any feeling! Daddy, I love him! Oh no, you didn't! <laughs> Horrified by her words, Triton decides to blast all of the secret treasures in her grotto with his Triton. Ariel breaks down in tears and Triton leaves, feeling guilty over what he has done. Yeah, just wait, this is gonna come back and bite him in the ass. Or tail in this case. Anyways, Ariel tells Sebastian and Flounder to leave her alone to grieve. Then, the Moray Eels, Foltsum and Jetsum, arrive and sweet-talk Ariel into going to Ursula to achieve her dreams of being with Eric. And Ariel accepts. And just as they leave, Sebastian tries to warn Ariel about Ursula. Ariel, no! No, she's a demon! She's a monster! Why don't you go tell my father? You're good at that. <laughs> and both Flounder and Sebastian follow Ariel all the way to Ursula's lair. And Ursula comforts Ariel by explaining to her that she can grant Ariel's wish to be human for three days. But she must give Eric the kiss of true love before the sunset of the third day, where she belongs to Ursula. And there's more. What I want from you is... Your voice. But without my voice, how can I... You will have your looks, your pretty face, and don't underestimate the importance of a body language. <laughs> oh, and here's another fun fact. Ursula was based on the drag queen Divine, who was well known for being in cult films like Pink Flamingo and Hairspray. Sadly, she passed away before the film came out. Oh, and Ursula was almost played by B. Arthur from Golden Girls fame, but she turned it down. Anyways, the Moray Eels stop Flounder and Sebastian from attempting to stop Ariel, but to no avail, as she agrees to Ursula's terms and signs the contract, trapping her voice in a necklace Ursula wears and giving her human legs. Once Ariel has been transformed into a human, both Sebastian and Flounder help take her to the surface, as Ariel can no longer breathe underwater. After making it to shore, the group meet up with Scuttle on the beach near Eric's castle. Sebastian threatens to tell the king about the deal Ariel made with Ursula, but Ariel manages to convince him with those puppy dog eyes. You could go home with all the normal fish and just be... just be... Oh, and here's another fun fact. Ariel's facial features were inspired by Alyssa Milano, and Ariel's body was modeled after Sherry Stoner, who would later be the model for Belle in Beauty and the Beast. Anyway, Scuttle then tells Ariel about how to blend in with humans by dressing up like them. Then, Prince Eric arrives at their location, and Ariel tries to convince Eric that she's the girl who saved his life, but to no avail. But luckily, he's willing to bring her to his castle to be taken care of, with Sebastian tagging along. Inside the palace, Sebastian is sent through a series of unfortunate events, which leads him to the castle's kitchen. And it is there, Sebastian encounters the chef preparing some seafood. Le 
poisson, les poissons, how I love les poissons, love to chop and to serve little fish. And shit hits the fan when the chef tries to cook Sebastian. <laughs> and as that shit goes on in the kitchen, Ariel meets with Eric and Grimsby in the dining hall for dinner. And this happens. Not often that we have such a lovely dinner guest, eh, Eric? Well, I just got some secondhand embarrassment. Anyways, both Eric and Grimsby discuss giving Ariel a tour of the kingdom, to which she agrees, and later that night, Ariel watches Eric play with his dog, Max, and goes off to bed. While Sebastian discusses plans to get Eric to kiss Ariel, You gotta bat your eyes like this. You gotta poke up your lips like this. Anyways, back in King Triton's palace, Triton sends several search parties to look for Ariel and Sebastian, but to no avail. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? No shit, Sherlock! The next morning, Ariel and Eric began their tour of the kingdom, starting with the nearby town. And Ariel is so enamored by every single thing she sees, whether it's a puppet show, horses, or even dancing. Hell, she even gets her first driving lesson. And later that evening, Eric takes Ariel on a lagoon cruise, and Scuttle tries to make it romantic, but it backfires. Wow, <laughs> somebody should find that poor animal and put it out of its misery. Luckily, Sebastian takes matters into his own claws and plays a song to set in the mood. And again, I cannot play the whole thing because of copyright, but I do have a parody. Pay the crab before her boobs you grab, or your nuts will stab and you'll bleed out, my friend. However, the eels cock block them, and Ursula, being a player hater, decides to take matters into her own tentacles and transform herself into a woman named Vanessa. And she also uses Ariel's voice to hypnotize Eric before announcing his true feelings to Ariel. The next morning, Eric and Vanessa are announced to be wed by sunset, leaving Ariel heartbroken as the wedding ship departs from the port, and she begins to weep over Eric's loss. Here's another fun fact, or a depressing fact in this case. In the novel, when this happens, she ends up killing herself, and the story ends there. So, yeah, glad Disney took away that part. Anyway, Scuttle happens to fly over the wedding ship when he hears Ariel's voice coming from the bride's dressing room. He takes a look inside and sees Vanessa's reflection. <laughs> the sea witch! And Scuttle flies off to inform Ariel and the group about Ursula and her plot. So Ariel and Flounder go after the wedding ship on a barrel, and Sebastian goes off to tell King Triton about what's happening, while Scuttle goes off to stall the wedding, and he does so by gathering every animal from the lagoon and sea to attack the wedding, giving Ariel the time she needs to get aboard. Fucking bitch! Few moments later. Ah! Oh, why you little? <laughs> gotcha, bitch! And Scuttle manages to snap the necklace off, shattering it across the deck and returning Ariel's voice back to her. And it also releases Eric from Ursula's spell. And Eric finally finds out Ariel's the one who saved him, but before they can kiss. <laughs> oh. 
Also, Vanessa turns back into Ursula and she drags Ariel back into the sea. In addition, they both run into Triton and Sebastian. Triton demands Ursula to release Ariel, but she counters back by insisting that Ariel is her slave now. After Triton hears Ariel apologizing to him, he attempts to destroy the contract but finds out that he is unable to because of it being magically enhanced. And so Triton spares Ariel by signing the contract and takes her place. Meanwhile, Eric takes a rowboat from the wedding ship and heads out to help Ariel. Ursula then claims Triton's crown in Triton and becomes queen of the sea. Ariel confronts her, but it backfires. And so Ursula attempts to use the Triton to sabotage Ariel. But luckily, Eric strikes Ursula in the arm with a harpoon. Gotcha, bitch! Ariel tells Eric to look out while Ursula sends her eels after him. And Eric is pulled down by the eels. Luckily, Flounder and Sebastian help out, but amid the chaos... Ursula attempts to use the Triton to destroy Eric, and Ariel stops Ursula, causing her to vaporize the eels instead. Well, rip those eels. Anyways, Ariel helps Eric to get back to the surface, and Ursula is pissed as hell and becomes a fucking kaiju. During her rampage, Ursula creates a whirlpool rising shipwrecks from the ocean floor. Eric pulls himself into one of them. Meanwhile, Ariel tries to save herself from Ursula, who attempts to blast her with the Triton. And just as Ursula prepares to destroy Ariel, Eric saves Ariel by doing the most pro-gamer move ever. <laughs> Oh, and fun fact, in a deleted scene, Ursula remained in her normal form, but Katzenberg wanted to make this scene to be, and I quote, more diehard. Which, not gonna lie, I can't blame him for that one. Diehard is badass as hell. And the day is saved as Eric makes it to the shore and passes out on the beach, and Ursula's curse is lifted from the merfolk in her garden, as well as King Triton. Back on the surface, Triton observes Ariel looking at Eric, and realizes she really does love him. After talking with Sebastian, Triton decides to pull his own pro gamer move. Then I guess there's just one problem left. And what's that, your majesty? How much I'm going to miss her. And he transforms Ariel back into a human again. And both Ariel and Eric are together once again and get married shortly after. And we get some hijinks with Sebastian and the chef again. <laughs> At the ceremony, Ariel bids farewell to her friends and family, and the film ends with a wedding ship sailing away under a rainbow, and Ariel and Eric kiss one last time. And after that, they have an awkward honeymoon. I'm finally a real girl, and it's our wedding night! <laughs> Do you want me to leave while you jerk off onto my eggs? I'd rather stay and watch if that's okay. And that was The Little Mermaid. The film received critical and commercial success as the film was nominated and won two Academy Awards for Best Original Score and Best Original Song for Under the Sea. The film was also credited to breathing life back into Disney animated feature films and starting the Disney Renaissance. The film's success also led to a franchise which include a direct-to-video sequel released in 2000 and a prequel in 2008. And it was the first film to be adapted into a Broadway play. It was also the last Disney film to use hand-painted cells, as later versions would later use computer animation. And in 2022, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. As for me, I enjoyed the film. The animation is amazing. You can see the amount of detail the animators put right down to the characters' expressions, emotions, the background, and even how their hair moves in the water. The music is still great. Pretty much every single one gets stuck in your head, whether it's Poor Unfortunate Souls or Under the Sea. And the characters are also great. For instance, Ariel is very bright and very spirited and headstrong. And just like every teenager, she wants some independence from her overprotective father. 
Also, she even saves Eric several times, which is something she doesn't get a lot of credit for, as people today shit on her for wanting to change herself for a man, and that being her only goal in this film. Apparently, some people forget that she had a strong admiration for the surface world, right down to collecting items from there, kind of like how someone does for a different country and or culture. Hell, she still uses the fork to comb her hair, which I find very hilarious. And as for, like, her wanting her man part that part only intensified her urge to go to the surface world hell you would too if you saw someone from a different country you have the hots for so long story short ariel is a great character to root for and as for the supporting characters they're amazing too sebastian scuttle and flounder are all great and stand out on their own eric is also great in my book as he not only saves ariel but the dog as well because that's what heroes do, goddammit. And as for Ursula, she steals the show, as she is an amazing villain. She's dark, wicked, and very manipulative, and a blast to watch. As for Triton, he does grow on you. As a kid, I saw him the same way as Ariel does. Overprotective, hot-headed, authoritarian, and he's xenophobic too. But as an adult, you do understand him more as he just wants to protect his daughter from humans, who are dangerous to an extent. But he does feel remorse after being very strict over Ariel, and he learns not just to let go of her, but to let go of his xenophobia. Yeah, and there's a deleted scene that shows this a bit more than the one we got. That human saved my life. But overall, the film is very enjoyable. It still holds up to this day. And it's not just for kids. You hear that, you fuck wants? So I would give this film 5 out of 5 C stars. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay safe out there. Goodbye. It might be sacred, classic tradition. To be honest, I guess we don't. What's the word? Care. Our time has arrived. We're second to none. Our company truly will be number one. Our legacy. Get that money. We'll remake your world. Uh, do you like it? It, it, it is rather fine. <laughs>